So today we're going to be talking about some common issues with BMW E90s. Today we're going to be talking about some common issues with the BMW E90 series. So now the BMW E90 series was from 2006 and on. So I've had my personal BMW 330i 6-speed manual for a year now and before that I had two other BMWs. So the first BMW that I had when I was just 19 years old, uh, it was a BMW 25ci, it was a convertible. And then the second BMW that I had was a, a BMW 530i which is the E39 series. Now, I know some of you guys are probably like, dude, this guy's a BMW fan, bro. Well, okay, I'm not, I'm gonna give you guys a fair opinion on my part uh, because BMWs is not the only car I've driven. I've driven many other cars. So, uh, some of the other cars that I've owned, I've held uh, two Miatas. I kind of wanted to know what they were like. They're amazing, they're super fun. I mean, I, I remember just going through the mountains and it was just a blast. Uh, and for all you Mercedes guys out there, I've also had two Mercedes. So, I had a Mercedes CLK 500. And then I had a Mercedes E500, which is pretty much a sedan version of that car. Those are really fun cars. But, but we're not going to get into those cars right now because we're talking about BMW, right? So the common issues that I've found, I've found four of them. And I'm just going to, these are the four common issues that these cars have. And there are other issues, but those are issues that you don't really need to worry about. So these four issues are from my personal experience as a previous BMW owner. I know some guys have posted videos out there where uh, they've posted issues, common problems with BMW 3 Series and maybe that's their first car. But for me, I've had two other BMWs and so this is my point of view. Alright, so the first problem that we have is the oil filter housing gasket. You ask, what is an oil filter housing, Jay? Alright, so an oil filter housing is a housing that sits on top of the engine block and in between there is a gasket that prevents oil from leaking out from the filter and going back into the engine. And so after a certain amount of miles, usually around 60 to 90,000 miles, that seal will fail and it will corrode, it will become hard and then it will crack. And then after that happens, you will find oil to be leaking either in front of the oil filter housing gasket. Or sometimes it's a good idea to jack your car up and to see what's actually going on underneath the car. This is actually an issue that I dealt with recently. So I did my research on this before I attempted this myself. I always do my own maintenance. So I hardly ever take my car to the dealership, let alone an independent mechanic. So as you know, BMW's dealership. So the cost to repair for this job is astronomical. Okay, so at a BMW dealership, they're gonna charge around $1,600 to do this job, all right, which is insane. And at an independent shop, you're looking at about $800, which is a lot less. However, considering how small the job actually is, I don't think it's actually worth it for you to even go there. Uh, if you're a person like me who's not scared of doing things, uh, I would go ahead and attempt this myself. Now you won't believe this, but the part itself is only $10. So I'm going to leave a description down below on ECS tuning. The part is $9.95. It's around $10. Plus the tools you're going to be needing, okay? And they're not specialty tools, so don't even worry about that. So number two problem that these cars have. Now this is a problem that is common amongst a lot of BMWs, okay? Which is a valve cover gasket. Now this is a leak that you cannot miss. I mean, you're gonna know this thing is leaking. Either when you pop your hood, you're gonna see some oil spillage on the side of your engine. And if you don't even catch that, hopefully you're checking your engine oil and your engine oil should be running low. And if not that, then you're gonna smell oil burning after you go ahead and drive your car for a while and then you come to a stop or you park your car, you're getting out of your car. You might smell a little something that's a little funky. When I was 19 years old and I had that 325CI, I was actually in Livermore downtown. I parked my car. I actually didn't have an idea whether that was leaking or not at the time. I parked my car and this enormous like cloud formed everywhere around my whole car. And I was like, holy crap, what the heck is going on? And it attracted a lot of people's attention around. They were like, yo, what's going on with this dude's car? And so I was kind of freaking out. So I turned my car off. I kind of did some quick research to see what was going on. And then I found out, okay, so it's this thing. It's not a big deal. And that's another plus point. There is such a big community behind these cars. Online, you can go on so many different forums and everybody has a post about any 
kind of problem that they probably had in the past and there's usually a thread on it and you can usually just follow that thread and if you don't want it to go ahead and take your car anywhere. So in my opinion, this usually happens around 90,000 miles to 100,000 miles. It just kind of depends on you. And the same principle here, uh, the gasket's pretty good. However, at that mileage, uh, the gasket will corrode, it will dry out, it will crack. That's what happens at that point. Now again, the dealership cost of this repair is gonna be $1,300, which is insane yet again. But if you go ahead and take your car to an independent mechanic shop, it's gonna cost around eight to $900. It just depends on where you take it. If it was me, I would do it myself just like I did. I was able to do this when I was 19 years old, so I don't see a reason why you guys can't do the same thing. Yet again, this part on ECS tuning is gonna be only $40, so all you need is a gasket and that's all. And when you do run into this issue, and if your car is around 90,000 miles, you wanna go ahead and do one more thing if you're doing that job anyways, which is gonna be, you're gonna be doing your spark plugs and your ignition coils. Now, this is an annoying issue because it happens all the time. However, if you do it properly the first time, you won't have this issue again or at least for another 100,000 miles or so, which is they're supposed to last. Now, spark plugs and the ignition coils are so easy to do. I feel like a monkey could even do that job, so I don't see a reason why we can't attempt that either. Now, I had no prior experience, so this is kind of how I learned. This is how I set my building blocks to where I am now, where I'm not scared of touching my car, because I kind of know how they're built. And that's another positive thing, is if you do go through these BMWs, you're gonna go ahead and find the similarity between models and you'll be able to know where everything is and how you're gonna do it, what kind of tools you'll need. Uh, usually BMWs like to use torque bolts. Now if you go to your local uh, retailers like Walmart or O'Reilly's, uh, Napa Auto Parts, uh, AutoZone, they're gonna charge you around $250 to $300 for the ignition coils and spark plugs. Um, I don't think you should do that. I don't trust those places in the first place. Uh, what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and went over there and got an ignition coil from them uh, as temporary so that way my car would be running fine until I get the ones that I'm waiting for in the mail. And so I went on Amazon.com and then I got everything for $168. So the coils cost me around $130 and then I believe the spark plugs were another $30 and the coils are original OEM, they're Bosch and then the spark plugs are NGK and if you don't know what NGK is, uh, they're a pretty reputable brand. Now the third thing we're gonna be discussing is a big one, uh, the water pump and thermostat. This is kind of an extensive job so I do recommend if you don't know what you are doing to go ahead and take your car into an independent mechanic and not a BMW dealership, you don't wanna do that. <laughs> Let's just take that out of the picture. You don't want to go ahead and go to a BMW dealership, right? They will charge you an insane amount of labor just because they can. So in the other conventional cars, you have the water pump that is powered by the engine. However, in the BMW E90, that's not the case. The BMW E90 uses the water pump that is a completely separate unit. It has an electric motor that powers the water pump as the car is running. Now that's a pretty intelligent design on BMW's part. However, it was poorly executed because all the parts are made out of plastic. Yeah, all the parts are made out of plastic. Get used to that because that's also going to be a problem. Now it is a clever design on BMW's part to go ahead and come out with this electric water pump because since it's not taking power from the engine, it makes the engine run more efficiently. Now this failure usually happens at 100k or below. It just depends on where you are, what kind of weather condition you're driving your car in. Now for me, um, I have a whole booklet that the previous owner gave me. Matter of fact, I have it right here. Now these are all records that I have from the previous owner including the window sticker, I'm talking all the records. Now this is really handy for me because I know what, what happened at what mileage so I know what to expect next. So mine failed around 130,000 miles. My car now runs healthy. It's at 202,000 miles. Yes, 202,000 miles and I have a six speed manual, original engine, original transmission and original clutch as well. So like I said, this is gonna be the most expensive repair you face. Um, it just depends on how you get it done. So the part itself is $300 on Amazon, and this is this is an OEM part, good quality part that you want to get. And the thermostat itself is also on Amazon for $63. Now, dealers can charge anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 for this particular job, and an independent mechanic will charge around $800 to $1,000. So that's that's really good in my part. Uh, the parts alone, like I said, it's like gonna be $363 plus labor, that's gonna come out to $800 or so. If you wanna do this yourself, if you know what you're doing, it's gonna be only around $400. 
So what the good thing about this is that once you get it done, you don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff for another 100,000 miles. So that gives you that peace of mind. So now the fourth thing that's on this list, um, I was kind of skeptical whether I wanted to put it on this list or not, but I did anyways. So this is the airbag and passenger restraint malfunction. There is a mat underneath your passenger seat. So let's say you were unfortunate and you were in the event of a collision. So that sensor would sense whether there's a person in that seat or not. So then it could decide whether to deploy those airbags or not in the event of an accident. And so that would save you some costs if you're getting your car repaired. So again, smart on BMW's part. However, once that sensor cracks, then those lights appear on your dash. Uh, I've been dealing with this issue for about four months and I'm really picky on my stuff. I don't like any lights on my dashboard. But this is something that I've just been living with or that I'm learning to live with. So I might figure out a solution for it. There are solutions for it and I'll discuss those right after this. So there'll be two lights that pop up on your dash and there'll be another light in the middle in your cluster that'll pop up. And then if you have iDrive like myself, uh, you'll have another warning as well. So you have to cancel that out, yes, at every freaking startup you do. So you're saying, all right, Jay, you just showed me this problem. What's the solution, man? Where's the solution at? All right, so we're getting there. So a couple solutions that I've thought of and two that are already out there. Number one, you could go ahead and add a resistor into your battery and you can get rid of the errors at all, but that's not gonna solve the issue. Number two, you can go ahead and replace the seat mat sensor. Uh, from what I know, that is pretty expensive. And if you are the original owner, I believe that is covered under warranty. Uh, it was under a recall, I believe. And then the third you can do is just replace a seat. It's gonna be cheaper than anything. All right, guys, so those are the four things that I thought of uh, with my experience that's the most common issues with these cars. However, I don't want to scare anybody away. BMWs are absolutely amazing cars. Uh, there's a reason why I keep going back to them. You learn how to cope with them, but if you're taking care of them like you're supposed to be doing, you shouldn't be running into any major issues. Like I said, BMW really knows how to build their engines. I mean, they've been coming from building airplane engines, so I'm sure they know what they're doing. BMW to me is very different than any other car that I've driven. It's truly a different car from all those other cars that I've had and other cars that I've driven myself. It just gives you a driver feel. Everything is just kind of pointing towards you so you feel you're in control. It doesn't matter what weather you're in, whether you're in rain, you're in snow, you're in you know, sunny, bright California weather, you're gonna be feeling like you know exactly where the car is going no matter what. So this is something that's just amazing about this car. You just really have to credit BMW Engineering to go ahead and give us all that feel. My car has 202,000 miles on it and there is I've not had a single major issue with this car, and so I feel like you guys should be fine. Uh, my other BMWs that I've had in the past is the same thing. Uh, they're pretty reliable cars. They're just gonna be these little things that I mentioned to you guys, these four things that you're just gonna have to take care of. I do guarantee if you ever go out and go buy one, you're gonna be a tad just like myself. This is just something that's special about owning a BMW, and on top, BMW has such a great history. Uh, that you, you'll be a proud owner of a BMW. And like I said guys, there's a huge backup for you guys online. There's so many forums, there's so many threads on every single thing. If you don't believe me, go ahead and go on Google right now and search exactly what you're looking for, whether it's any type of BMW. I guarantee you're gonna go ahead and find a solution no matter what. You don't need me sitting here telling you guys exactly what's wrong with these cars. However, I felt like I needed to go ahead and just make a video because I've owned two or three of these things. I have a good history with these cars. I can share some of my own personal opinions, my past experiences with you guys.